All right, so we've now hardened our three 52100 ball bearing steel knives. We can see quite distinctly here the line along which we quenched, the quench line or temper line as it's commonly known as. All right, we can see it on both the, the full tangs and to a degree on the narrow tang. See, I'm doing it all over there. All right. Let's just move the camera a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to test for hardness. Now I don't have a Rockwell tester. What I do have is a square file. Now this is around about 62 Rockwell. This is an old file. Don't use a new one because it's going to screw up your new files if the blade is properly hard. All I do is I take the blade, I put it on the table, take the corner of the file, not the flat. Don't be scared to uh, try and get in there and dig it in because if you can dig into your blade, and leave a mark, an actual dent. It means your blade's not hard enough. If it's hard enough, this won't make a difference. So, there you go. Now you can see it's a bit shiny on the edge there. Now that shiny is just the scraping of the surface. Where is it there? It's just the scraping of the surface. See it's shiny along the edge there. That's only scraping off the oxidizing scale. It's actually not left any dents or anything. You can see here. Along the edge, you can see quite clearly. There isn't. You would see a little deformation along the edge there. So that one's hard. Take this one all the way along the edge. I examine it. I feel it. You can feel if there's any bites. No bites. And the last one, the puko. No bites. There you go, you can see the edge is still smooth. There you go. So these have been hardened harder than 62 Rockwell. All right, so now I know that much. Now I'm gonna grind them clean. Next shot you're gonna see them is they're gonna be nice and clean. And I'm gonna go put them in the tempering oven. Okay, so there they've all been clean ground. This is just a rough grind. Now this one, he's got a forged texture finish. So we only clean up parts of the handle. I've cleaned it with a 60 grit and uh, that's going to go into the tempering oven with the rest of them. There's the uh, little hunter jobby and you see, let me see, what you can't see here is you can actually see the temper line. That's not it, that's just a different bevel in the grind. There you go, you can, so if you look at it here, there, you can already see at 60 grit the quench line. So that's the difference between the hard steel, the hard martensite, and the soft austenite at the back. All right, and then of course the little cocoa is also done. All right, so these three are going to go into the tempering oven. I'm going to do it by hooking them up with some some brass wire. So all we do is with the two full tangs, we just hook the brass wire through there, and just a little twist so that it doesn't fall off. And through there, a little twist so it doesn't fall off. Okay, and then for this one, through the magic of time travel, I am going to grind a notch on the end. So there's the notch. The camera would focus on it. There we go. So I've got a little notch on it there. And we're just going to take a piece of brass wire. You can use steel wire for this as well, but just brass wire is what I've got on hand. Twist it, make a hook <coughs> to hang in the <coughs> excuse me to hang in the tempering oven, and then I'm going to take, I'm going to go to our tempering oven. Yeah, sitting in the corner of my workshop, and I'm going to set it. Yeah, where is it? Are they? Four. Uh, yeah, that's about right. Set about 290 degrees Celsius. This will turn it a deep purple. Sorry, a deep blue color. For the f for the 52100 steel, I found that anything lower, the edge becomes brittle. In fact, I tell you what. For reference sake, we're just going to lower that. Oop, wrong way. To 250. 
and uh, if that still doesn't work I'll show you the edge test after tempering and um, we'll see if the edge cracks at this temperature if it still cracks we need to temper it some more all right so we're gonna put the blades in there's my little oven there okay so hang on the two All right, so come back in about two hours for the first temper and then one times one hour, sorry, two times one hour for the second temper. Thank you very much for watching. Oh no, we're not finished yet. The next time you see me will be after the first tempering cycle. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so we can see here, I've done, this is two tempering cycles at the 250 degrees. You can see the blue color just past purple okay even though it doesn't show on the other side it is pretty even there you, go. you can see the temper line there as well look at that cool and then the other one as well quite satisfied of that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the blades grind it down to its cutting edge and we're going to do a flex test Alright, so here I've got a very roughly sharpened knife. I've put an apple seed edge on it. You can see the edge is slightly convex on both sides. But still very, very fine. You can see how thin it is. Just to show you. There you go. I don't even feel the hair coming off. Nice and sharp. Alright. Now we're going to do the edge flex test. Now this I do to check if the steel has been tempered correctly if it is too hard the edge will chip slightly if it's too soft the edge will bend now I'm anticipating a chipping this is the first you're seeing it the first time I've done it so I've not done this prior to uh, filming uh, this, this this little clip so what, what you're gonna see is what I'm gonna see I've got your brass rod anything works but a brass rod is just uh, commonly used and what we're gonna do is we're going to run the edge let's see if we can zoom in for you there we go we're going to put the edge on and i'm going to flex it okay it's not breaking okay the very very end the very very edge is see it you can see that little warp there let me see if i can zoom in a little closer that's as close as it'll go okay you can see it's got little deformations on the edge but that's right on the edge that's not the crucial part the crucial part is the main body of the blade so you can see I'm pushing there you'll see it see can you see it flexing there that little shadow that dips up I'm pushing quite hard I want it to break and let's, let's see it's not breaking now your very edge will deform slightly it's just because it's so thin what I am hoping for is something that won't chip okay so if you check the majority the main body of it there you go there look at that flex look at that this is well heat treated this is a piece of 52 100 I know you can see the right the, the very edge is deforming but remember that's because it's super thin it's not chipping now I'm gonna put now we're gonna do the ultimate we're gonna put a little bit more of a there you go, look at that. This is a, a good flex test. Look at the way it rolls, the edge rolls. Okay, this is an excellent sign that this has been tempered correctly at 250 degrees. So I just feel that. Feel the other side. That little deformation, again, like I say, I stress, that deformation right in the end is only because the edge is so fine. If it were hard, all that would have chipped off. But like I said, the main body of the bevel, edge bevel, needs to flex. And I'm pushing really hard, hey? I want it to chip. Look, we're gonna wiggle it back and forth. There's no deformation in the main body of the bevel. So this has been heat treated correctly. So if any of you are interested, um, at 52100 at approximately 250 degrees Celsius until it becomes 
purple like this that is a very good color for your bearing steel so this then let me just check the other side not that it should make a difference there you go you can see just flexing the other way around but you can see you can hear there's no cracking look at the way that bends see that little flex there in the middle look at the way it flexes and cracks are very obvious you'll hear it clicking as, it, as all the pieces chip out but this is flexing very nicely very good and I can feel it that what looks like a burr on the edge there is actually not a burr it's just the very slight deformation I can't even feel it not on the other side either so there you go and then will that still shave that piece in the middle there there we go let's just see get it there why yes it will look at that all right so there we go <sighs> my bald spot so my heat treating was successful so for 52 100 250 degrees celsius is perfect thank you very much for watching the tempering cycle actually that's kind of cheating i didn't tell you what else you must do all right so this is two times one hour cycles that i've done so far i'm going to do one more cycle just to be sure and uh then i'm confident then i'll be confident that the blades are tough and are ready for use and have to worry about the edges chipping now for normal tempering you do this three to three times one hour between each hour cycle you take it out you can let it cool you can also quench it in water it doesn't make that much of a difference I like doing it in water and then putting it immediately back into the oven let me put this on me okay I like to put it immediately from the water back into the oven this just increases the speed of the tempering cycles but I didn't have to do that some guys think it's risky from my experience as you can see here it really uh, is nominal the differences so you do three times one hour and then when you're done you grind finish polish as you need it now there is also selective tempering which I'll cover in another video where you actually take a blowtorch and you run it along the spine of the knife making the spine even softer than it is while retaining hardness in the cutting edge thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe